back to the channel. Following on from the last episode on the Z where I moved back through the bike and we've got the tail light done and the indicator stems. I've still got to source a couple of bolts or try and work that out because there are no holes in the mudguard so I don't think they go through there. Shocks, they just need to clean down so I've done one, I've got the other one to do and I'm still going to refurb the old ones that were with the bike when I got it. As promised, as you can see on the bench today, we're going to start the wheels. Daunting task, I have been putting it off as much as possible so I can try and do as much research as possible. I've watched a fair few videos and think I've, I've got it, but the only way I'm going to learn is by doing it myself. So we're going to start with the rear wheel. It's going to be fun. You know, this is a real learning curve and experience for me. This... I must reiterate, like it says at the start of the video, this is not a how-to. I'm not an expert on this. This is the first time I've ever done this, so it's going to be fun. But uh, I'll get the camera set up so you can see, and let's crack on. Right, so hopefully everybody can see. I've tried to put it in as best position as possible. Right, so I'm going to actually start from the actual um, air valve hole. Actually unsure why this has three. What I did before I started the video, I actually loosened every single one off and actually threaded it So two threads were actually showing. On each. Like so. And then I went round again. So literally every single one was flush with the end. So I'm left with some spokes that are quite tight and some spokes that are quite loose. So that one there is tight, not too bad, loose. Not too bad, very loose, quite tight, loose. So what I'm actually going to do now is go around the whole wheel, find my starting point. That is my starting point, I've actually uh, marked it with a piece of tape, because like I said, there's actually One there, another one there, but I've just picked one. So I'm actually going to start from this hole, do a complete 360, not tightening up the ones that are tight, but the ones that are loose. Please go around with the spoke spanner. Starting up my valve hole and literally doing a quarter of a turn on each one that needs doing and work round. And of course praying I'm actually getting this right. It is definitely a daunting process. As I say, there's my start point. So, from your side, I'm starting with this one and then working around each one that feels a little bit loose still and tightening. If it feels tight, I'm not touching it. And then back round to the start again. 
Right, so I've actually gone around with the spoke spanner three times now. And returned to my mark, which is next to the valve hole. I've also rigged up the pointer, a slight gap between. And what I've noticed there. Tried to get the camera in the best place I can. So it seems it's down here. And there's my mark. Actually, this is helping me having the camera right in front here. So it's bowing right there, which as far as I'm aware, these would be too tight. So I'd need to loosen these off and then tighten 180 degrees above. So I'm going to do that, check that, and then I'll show you the results. Right, so after some time, it's still not quite right. As I say, this is the original rim, so I don't know if there's a slight buckle in it or not. I must admit, I've watched as many videos as possible and they all make it look so easy, but when you actually try it for yourself... It is quite difficult. But no, that has taken some time and we've still got the actual front one to do, so I'm going to mount the front one up, put, take the rear one off, put it to one side, we'll load the front one up and we'll start on the front one. This video may run into a to be continued, but we'll see how we go. So let me get this one off, I say everything is tight. if it comes to it later on I may actually replace this rim with a with a new one so let me load up the front rim All right, the front one is in As I say none of the spokes are tight they're all very loose see we have an up and down motion but not too bad on the side to side so again I'm going to start exactly the same as I did on the other one and literally try and get every spoke up to the last thread well so the last thread is actually invisible so some I've got coming quite some way so I'm just going to go around the whole wheel because as you can see some of them are at different lengths and get them all to the ends of the threads. All 
Right, so I've done a complete circle of all the spokes working from the valve hole where I've made a, a mark with a piece of tape. So every thread now is up to the last thread on the end of each one. But some are still loose, some are tighter. So what I'm going to do now is go around with spoke spanner working from my start point which is the valve hole here just half a turn Only the looser ones. Right, so that's two complete revolutions. I'm going to do another two and flip the wheel round and check it from the other side. Right, so after a couple of uh, passes going around each spoke, just tightening up the ones that needed tightening. Got a slight movement there. So I need to tighten up the ones on this side, probably be Probably four spokes, we do four spokes at a time, loosen on one side, tighten on the other. Alright, after quite some time, just going around the rim, loosening off the high spots, tightening up the low spots. I think that's about there. As I say, this is not as easy as uh, people make out. Well, for me, it's not. Whether I'm not just grasping it, I don't know. But I've watched many videos. But glad that's. Uh, Glad that's done. I know what some people are going to say that I should have a spoke torque wrench, which I don't have. Several of the videos that I've watched, they don't have them. It is an expensive tool apparently for something that you hardly ever use. A couple of the videos I use, they've just done them to a good tightness. That seems to have worked so right so I'll get this one off this machine put the machine to one side and then we'll see if we can get uh, a tire on it well first thing I've got to do I've got I've got to quickly pull the bearings out <laughs> 